Hello, I'm Antonio Mora. This is the News and News.com Day in Brief on Tuesday, February 5th at about 6 p.m. Are you ready for politicians to clap excessively, endlessly, and needlessly? Are you ready for others to sit on their hands when normal people would clap? Welcome to the annual ritual that is the modern State of the Union Address. White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders said we will see a visionary speech. Trump is expected to call for optimism and unity, attempting a reset after two years of bitter partisanship and deeply personal attacks from both sides. Calling for unity while threatening an emergency declaration to build a border wall, though, doesn't seem like a recipe for success. And some of Trump's guests seem destined to raise the temperature in the immigration debate. And the D.C. divisions are plain to see today, even before Trump starts to speak. Senate Minority Leader Schumer attacked the president already, saying that the state of the Trump administration's economy is failing America's middle class. That's not really what economic numbers and polls show. Trump fired back in a tweet. Democrats are also using their guests to troll Trump on various issues. They include a transgender Navy lieutenant commander, federal employees furloughed during the shutdown, a Parkland survivor, and a mother and daughter separated at the border. Maybe they all have a different definition of unity than what you and I do. Stacey Abrams, who narrowly lost her bid to be the country's first woman governor, will deliver the Democratic response. It is a very rare case of that honor going to someone who is not holding a major political office. Ahead of the speech, Trump continued the drumbeat for his wall. He tweeted that he will use the military to build a human wall if necessary. The Pentagon is already deploying more than 3,700 troops to the U.S.-Mexico border. Trump is expected to use the State of the Union to again trumpet the near total defeat of ISIS in Syria, but U.S. officials are concerned the terrorists are playing the long game, lying low and waiting for the U.S. to leave. Today, the top general in charge of U.S. military operations in the Middle East testified before the Senate that Trump did not consult him before announcing he'd withdraw troops from Syria. Republicans in the Senate had again broken with Trump on Monday, supporting a measure that opposes abrupt U.S. withdrawal from Syria and Afghanistan. The non-binding amendment passed with a rare bipartisan 70 to 26 vote. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said Islamist militant groups in both countries still pose a serious threat to the U.S. If Trump thought his legal problems would be limited to special counsel Mueller's investigation or pesky probes from congressional committees now run by Democrats, he'd be wrong. Federal prosecutors from the public corruption section of the Southern District of New York have subpoenaed documents from Trump's inauguration committee. They want to know how more than $100 million were spent, where that money came from, and whether foreign nationals were illegally among the donors. This afternoon, CNN is reporting that federal prosecutors from the Southern District have also requested interviews with executives at the Trump Organization. It's not clear what information they are after, but some members of Trump's inner circle, including Chris Christie, have expressed concern that the investigations by the Manhattan U.S. Attorney's Office could pose more danger than the Mueller probe. Is Virginia Governor Ralph Northam hoping that the passage of time will ease the pressure on him to resign? That would seem to be wishful thinking. A super PAC is threatening an ad campaign to call for his impeachment, saying the racist picture found on his medical school yearbook page disqualifies him from office. Complicating matters in Virginia is that the man who would take over if Northam resigns, Lieutenant Governor Justin Fairfax, is in the middle of his own firestorm. A woman who is a fellow at Stanford University and a professor at Scripps College is reportedly accusing him of sexual assault during the 2004 Democratic Convention. Fairfax is forcefully denying it. His accuser has hired the same law firm that represented Brett Kavanaugh's accuser, Christine Blasey Ford. If you are going to make illegal immigration a centerpiece of your campaign and your presidency, you might want to make sure you don't employ a whole bunch of undocumented workers yourself. Eric Trump is confirming an ongoing purge at Trump properties, including the dismissal of 18 undocumented workers from five golf courses in New York and New Jersey over the past two month, months. Sure, the Trumps employ an awful lot of people, so some might fall through the cracks, but their organization is plenty big enough to properly check documentation. The international and domestic pressure on Venezuelan dictator Nicolás Maduro to step down is mounting. A group of major Latin American nations and Canada are urging the Venezuelan military to back the country's interim president, Juan Guaidó. 
Maduro's defiant rhetoric is escalating proportionately with the pressure, threatening a civil war and warning Trump will stain his hands with blood if he sends troops to Venezuela. Today, Maduro also threatened to imprison Guaido, a move that could trigger international intervention. The Russians just said they don't want a new arms race and that we are not in a new Cold War. But today, the Kremlin's defense minister said Russia must develop new missiles. We also heard the Russian Navy has mounted a new weapon on two warships. It reportedly fires a beam similar to a strobe light that disorients those targeted, disrupting their eyesight and making them hallucinate and vomit. Remember when President Obama ridiculed Mitt Romney for saying Russia was the biggest geopolitical threat facing America? It sure seems Romney was right. A CNN investigation claims the Saudis and their coalition partners have transferred American-made weapons to all sorts of extremists in Yemen, including Al-Qaeda-linked fighters. They have even gotten into the hands of the Iranian-backed Yemeni rebels. Finally, an astronomer is doubling down on his claims that an alien spaceship flew through our solar system. He's also talking about how the discovery of alien life will transform our lives. Now, before you think this is some crazy crank talking about aliens in Roswell or Area 51, it's Harvard's top astronomer. We have all those stories and much more updated around the clock seven days a week on newsandnews.com, where you will find all you need to know in one place. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the right of your screen just below this video. And please follow us on Facebook at Real News and News and me on Twitter at Amora TV. I'll see you again tomorrow.